two smartwatches on my two hands. Does this even make sense? In theory, this sounds ridiculous. In practice, the Galaxy Watch 4 has some serious limitations. I used it as a smartwatch, as a backup phone, but also as a fitness tracking device. It has different GPS systems, different geolocation systems, but there are also some serious limitations, as I said. The battery life. I have to charge it at least two times or three times a day if I want to record up to an hour of GPS-based activity, or maybe also not GPS-based, but maybe also I'm driving with a bike to somewhere, and then I need the GPS. On the other side, we have this watch. This watch lasts for days because mostly, I guess, because of the special display. And it also, as I realized yesterday, can replace finally my Casio watch with displaying the time because unlike an AMOLED display, which is very fine and also doesn't need as much power when it has a dark screen, so when it doesn't display anything, but it is an AMOLED display that lights up, so it basically produces light, whereas this display doesn't produce light. It is basically a display that works without light and only, trans only reflects the ambient light, which is very convenient because then the battery lasts a lot longer. This is the Garmin Forerunner 255. And I questioned again and again and again whether something like this makes sense. Now, the main reason I will wear these watches at least for the next months, probably simultaneously, even though I already ordered a different watch and this will be sent back for some reasons, here is why I think it makes sense to have two watches. First of all, think of you whenever you are running. Whenever you are running, you basically have two little weights on your hands. Now, if these two weights are not fairly similar, then what happens is that one hand will have a little bit more weight compared to the other one. So therefore, you will adjust your posture slightly. This is one consideration. Your posture, your running posture especially, probably will adjust over the long time. If you now have two things that are ideally almost equal in terms of weight, and in terms of size and so on and so forth. So also in terms of the proportion and the distribution of the weight, much more the distribution, then running probably will be a lot more symmetrical. So therefore your running posture especially could be a little bit better. Is this an effect that is worth buying two watches? Probably not. But also there is the aesthetic aspect. I do think it is better that my both hands are symmetrical, kind of even though the watches themselves do look a little bit different. And also currently the band is a little bit different because this is 18 millimeters and this is 20 millimeters. And this is also one of the reasons I, instead of getting the Forerunner 255, which I currently have, I got a refurbished Garmin Phoenix 6S Pro, which is two millimeters bigger in diameter, but also has then the 20 millimeter straps and also has instead of 4 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is again very nice because it also has the feature of having enabled maps, which means that I then have a actual kind of the best watch from Garmin in a small version because I want to have small watches because I want to wear them all day, ideally also when sleeping, because that's when it makes sense to record this many data. This much data. If you have, let's say this is time and you record your heart rate, but then you don't record your heart rate here, but your heart rate here might be like this or like this, then this is maybe something that is useful information. But if this data is just missing, then this is not useful. In the long term, this pollutes your data set. It makes the whole data set inaccurate. And this is the main problem I currently have with the Galaxy Watch. I do have a occasional workout that is just not tracked because I forgot to charge the watch in time. Because I need to charge it two or three times a day, I also have the problem that I don't record steps. I already thought up of a solution, which is to get a Galaxy Fit, which should be somewhere in here, a Galaxy Fit 2, which I just use to record my steps. Why don't I re record also the heart rate, which also would be possible, and also auto-detect workouts with this, because it again pollutes my dataset. The Galaxy Watch 4 is, I guess, at least much more accurate than this device. So therefore, if I record this device and then it records heart rate randomly of 200, which happened, 
then the whole data set is kind of polluted. If I have, for example, the highest and the lowest values over a given year, and then, so these are the lowest, these are the highest, and then you have the different months, and there is just randomly 200 in here, which stems from this device here, then this is a problem because it pollutes again the whole data set. Let's talk price. I bought this watch for 350 euros, which was fairly expensive, but it was also new and I wanted to really upgrade from the Galaxy Active 2 I had before. Maybe I should have waited for half a year because usually the prices drop quite significantly because buying from directly the manufacturer is usually not the best idea. So I bought it for 350. I also lost the first watch. For this reason, I had to buy another watch, which is not nice. Maybe the watch was also stolen and it was kind of a kind of a combination of me losing it first and then it being stolen because it just wasn't found ever. But at the same time, this now means that I had to buy a second one and the cost is actually much higher, even though this is just due. This is not really due to the watch itself. This one cost me 360 euros and this is a higher price than you would actually pay. And this was kind of a maybe not totally optimized decision on my side. And I could have gotten this watch for 340 euros. So now this is a watch that is made for runners and is not the top watch from Garmin that is made for runners. The top watch would be the Forerunner 955 and this is the Forerunner 255. So the kind of mid-range model. There is also a lower range model, the 55. And the last ones were the 45, then the 35 and so on. Now, why do I have these two watches? The Samsung watch can record your activities. It has GPS and so on and so forth, but it has the main problem of the battery. And additionally, what it also can do is it re can record blood pressure. It can record ECG. These two are pretty exclusive to the Galaxy watch, maybe also to the Apple watch. But since I am on the Android side of devices and on the Windows side of devices, I don't have Apple. So what does this watch now offer? First of all, it offers that I can have an additional system. And if you think about Samsung Health on the one side and Garmin Connect on the other side, then Samsung Health is just more for the general user, for the person that maybe gets something like this, for the person that maybe gets the watch, for the person that wants a smartwatch that is also a fitness tracker. And I am this person. I, don't, I didn't want to invest more money just to get two watches and two systems. There is also some consideration that you get the system. If you buy the Garmin Connect watch, this is the only, this is the only way to access the full Garmin Connect system. And Garmin Connect is kind of better in many ways than Samsung Health. Samsung Health is also better in some ways than Garmin Connect. It also depends on who uses it. In my case, I would see myself more as a typical Garmin user, but I was in Samsung Health. And since I was in Samsung Health, I was kind of frustrated all the time because Samsung Health just did not add something like HRV, even though the watches themselves seem to be possible to pick it up because I now have a third party app that is called Veltery that can track HRV within a snapshot that takes like one or two minutes. And the same is possible on this watch. It also takes snapshots during the day for about two minutes and then it can determine your HOV or whenever you don't move your hands for long periods of time, aka when you are sleeping, it also can track your HOV. Garmin just offers more, more for the sport enthusiast. And I also already tried to synchronize my, my workouts from Samsung Health on the left side to Garmin Health on the right side with different services, such as HealthSync, which is a third party app that can sync from Samsung to Garmin, not. It only can sync from Garmin to Samsung. So Garmin usually can only be yours, used as a source, but not the other way around. And this is kind of a problem. So therefore I now have a different app, which is called uh, Sync My Tracks, which only syncs my activities, but not blood pressure, not my weight, not my body fat, and so on and so forth. All these other data sets that are also stored now in Samsung Health. Now with Samsung Health, what you also have is now an integration with Google Fit. And this is something that is quite useful. Previously, I used HealthSync, the service, 
to transfer mostly data from Samsung Health to Google Fit. So therefore I hit two services, which both had the same data sets, kind of, at least the one that synced. What this allowed me to do is, whenever an app, an integration only used Google Fit, I used Google Fit. Of course, I didn't have bi-directional writing, bi-directional synchronization, but what I had was unidirectional synchronization from Samsung Health to Google Fit. So ideally, my Sam Samsung Health would be the source for all kinds of things, but this didn't quite work out because sometimes you just have Google Fit as an option. What you then still can do is use Google Fit in order to import workouts, for example. My fasting apper, zero, even though I tend to not use it because it still is way too buggy to even input data and I got kind of um, frustrated too much with it. If you input data and after three times of input, it doesn't take the data and you would additionally need to input it. It just doesn't make sense. But what it makes sense is to connect Google Fit maybe to this app. And then you have things like maybe your blood glucose that transferred from Samsung Health to Google Fit and then you have it in there or you have your weight or you have your body fat, etc., etc., which is kind of nice. But Garmin, on the other hand, is just the thing you actually want. It's the thing that is made for people that are actually really into sports. I once tracked a bike ride that was like two hours with the older version of this, with the Active 2, which is the two generation older version. And after like 50 kilometers or 30 kilometers actually, it just gave up, it was gone. This also now not only means that after 30 kilometers or maybe two hours of activity tracking on the bike with all sensors activated, I not only use my data of tracking the activity, but what I also use is my phone. And so therefore by having a second watch that now allows me to record activities on a much lower usage of battery, because this lasts for days, whereas this lasts for hours. What this allows me to do is I can, at least in theory, if I kind of can make it work that I sync the activities from Garmin to Samsung Health or in general now to Health Platform, which is basically now an overarching platform. So if this is Health Platform, then it acts as the synchronization between Google Fit and also Samsung Health and synchronizes activities within the last 30 days between those two. Ideally now, it would replace Health Sync, which I previously used for this exact purpose. So now I ideally now have two systems running. I probably will in the future now track all my activities and steps with this, but this will also track my steps probably. And I will maybe not enable the automatic workout tracking on here anymore, but just the step tracking. Maybe this is kind of connected. I don't really have figured it out totally. But what this allows me to do is, first of all, I want to get rid of using my phone that much. Samsung Health is phone-based only. Garmin has an as a web platform. That is actually kind of the most professional platform you could potentially have, I guess, for managing your health currently. There is also Whoop, and I wanted a Whoop so badly, but what I eventually realized that this is a Whoop, but it also is a watch, and it also is a Casio watch. So by getting a Whoop, I, where would I have put it if I would have gotten a second smartwatch? Nowhere. Even if I just had this watch, and then I have an additional strap I need to put somewhere. I don't want to put it on my upper arm or in my underwear or something like this, which you can do, by the way. But I think it just doesn't make sense to manage more than two devices. And since I already had two devices, this is not so much of a step up, especially since I need to only ideally charge this device once a week, either the Forerunner 255 or the, in a few days, hopefully coming, 6S Pro. Now, in total, what I get is ideally two systems. I get still the benefits of Samsung Health because Garmin on the other hand still hasn't enabled ECG functionality on any of the watches and also doesn't measure blood pressure. Uh, but Samsung actually has a dedicated blood pressure device, which you cannot buy in my country yet, but you can buy it in the US. So Garmin seems to be the, the system that manages your health. You get just so much more. In Samsung Health, you get these different data sets. You get these different things you, in theory, can 
can record and view. So there are, within Samsung Health, you have all these different things here, all these different data points. So up here, you have your daily activities, then you have your steps up here, then you have also blood glucose, theoretically, and you can also sync blood glucose from other apps and so on and so forth. You have your body fat, you have your weight, and you can also click on these and see trends. But when it comes to measuring how much power your body actually still has, the only option it allows you to, to view is stress. So now stress is maybe very important and maybe this is the one metric we just should focus on. And maybe for many people, Garmin Connect is just too overwhelming with all of these different things you can potentially manage. But for me, Garmin Connect seems to be the thing that I wanted all day long, all along, you could say. So only with this mid-range watch, what I already have is I have my current heart rate up here, pretty similar to Samsung F. Actually, also the design is pretty similar to Samsung F. And maybe I'm also kind of just on too much dopamine right now because I got a new watch and discovered this new system. But what you get, for example, on here is body battery. Body battery says how much power your body still has for the rest of your day, basically. And body battery also has a, an equivalent when it comes to training. It's called stamina. It's only accessible on the Phoenix 7 series. But what it means, it tells you how much is left in the tank whenever you are running, for example. And if you are running a marathon, and then it just calculates all these different values. It gets HRV. So it basically is a whoop within a smartwatch. So you don't need the whoop, which would cost 20 euros a month for the rest of your life, and also would take one of these slots on your hands, at least on mine. And in general, it would just be a very simplistic, simplistic thing. But this is something that can be manually adjusted. And body battery is kind of similar, I would say, to the, not the whoop strain, but what the whoop recovery actually is. There are also other things uh, which I haven't calculated yet since I only got the watch yesterday. So there is something called training readiness, similar to body battery, but I think much more focused on how much are you able to train right now compared to how much you are able to generally just do things right now, which is maybe more the body battery. So I don't understand all of these things right now and as of yet, but what you also have, for example, is HRV status. It finally has HRV. HRV is basically the time the difference in time between your different heartbeats. So there are two parts of your autonomous nervous system, the, uh, the parasympathetic part and the sympathetic part. The parasympathetic one, or just short in para, or if I use para, then the other one doesn't have a name because it's just parasympathetic and sympathetic. So if I call the one the para, then this system is the one that calms everything down. And the other one is the one that ramps everything up. So within a heartbeat, your, your autonomous nervous system can basically control whether it's time to ramp things up or to calm things down. And now, depending on the time difference, what you can kind of calculate is what system is kind of currently in control. And if you take the trends over time, then you can calculate things like training readiness, stamina, body battery or HRV status, which shows you kind of also the same thing just based on HRV. And since I already told you that you can now, on a third party app called Veltery, get HRV readings on the Galaxy Watch, the Galaxy Watch would have this possibility anyway, but they just probably choose to not display it because they don't want to confuse users who just want to track their steps and have a smartwatch. But I don't. I want to have the maximum amount of data that I can get from my body because now I'm young and I'm healthy, but this won't be the case. And this won't be the case for long, probably. I could get hit by a bus tomorrow and could be disabled for the rest of my life. So therefore, I think it makes very much sense if I'm now able, psychologically, but also physiologically able, that I mean, there is this thing called mortality that basically increases like this over time, and this is kind of then the point where you die. It also kind of flattens out if you made it through that point, but this is only the average of many people, so therefore probably only the people that actually only were dedicated for living longer all along actually make it, and then it doesn't impact. And then the other ones, the ones that are getting, that they get worse and worse and worse over time, are basically filtered out, and then the other ones only are left. So maybe this is this effect. But as mortality increases, your risk for, for, for death 
increases. That's kind of what mortality is. So basically, with increasing mortality and also with increasing time, your chance of dying of any cause goes up. All cause mortality. But also your risk of cancer just multiplies. Your risk of other diseases just multiplies. Maybe even by the dozens or hundreds. So therefore, getting data now when I'm healthy and doing as much now as I can in order to keep my health is the most important thing probably in my life because with no health, I can live no longer. Of course, with no time, you can also live no longer. But since these two are so interrelated, of course, it makes sense to have both. If you don't have time and health, if you have zero time, there is no there is no living. If you have zero health, there is also no living. So there are these knockout criteria and time and health are two of these. So now, additionally, what you get within Health Connect is a better integration kind of, but this is also similar, fairly similar, I would say, to Samsung Health, which also has an integration with my fitness pal. So you can see your calories. But what Samsung Health doesn't have anymore, and it used to have it in the beginning when I actually got my first Galaxy Fit, is weight management. And just a very simple calculation. Here are the calories you burned, here are the calories you ate, and this is what is left. And then whenever you ate too much, and basically, so whenever you burned calories, this is what you, I burned yesterday, additionally. And whenever you ate too much, it just shows you red. This is when you overate because you didn't burn off these calories. And this is just so simple. And Samsung Health just doesn't offer something like this. It just decided to quit the weight management tool. Maybe because it was inaccurate, I don't know. But what if I just want to have something like this? Then, well, it also automatically determined my goal of 2,500 calories every single day from Fitness Pal, which is also nice. Then I do also have the weight in here, which it synchronizes from my Fitness Pal, I guess, because the scale I use from FeelFit or Comptron, so Comptron stands on a scale, not stands, but is written on a scale, and FeelFit is then the app that I use. It doesn't synchronize to Garmin Connect directly, so again, a problem of synchronization. In general, I would say Google Fit is the service that is most available on Android in order to synchronize, then maybe Samsung Health and then maybe Garmin. It depends. And so you need some kind of synchronization between those. Ideally, Garmin Connect would again join Health Platform. In the past, there was also just a native integration with Samsung Health, but they just got rid of it, maybe because of competitiveness of these two systems. Now, you also have steps, you also have sleep, and of course you can click on these individually, at least on sleep, for example, and then see details. And I would argue in some of these, Samsung Health has the better one. And if Samsung Health, for example, is able to record a lot of posture data on your running posture and so on and so forth, just with the Galaxy Watch. Garmin Connect, on the other hand, maybe would also be able to record similar data. I haven't experienced this as of now, but for some, you also need a chest strap, or at least you can get additional. What also is unique to some to to Garmin is not the pulse ox, but the acclimation. So the acclimation is kind of how well you're adapted to your current level of height on Earth, because there is a correlation between how much oxygen is in the air and how high you are. If you are living on a mountain, less oxygen. Because of gravity, the air is just less thin. At least that's the explanation I can currently come up with. Additionally, what you have within Garmin Connect is the respiratory rate, and you just don't get it within within this watch, which is not nice. But I can get it now with this watch. And so for breathing exercises, this is tremendous. Why? Because it now can control how you breathe. How accurate this is, I don't know. But since it is there, there at least seems to be some accuracy for these data, because if it was just random data, then they probably wouldn't implement it in something like this. What you also additionally have is these things here. So I actually now will focus for one time actually on this here. And this is basically your last day and then your stats from the last day and also your stats from yesterday, which is also nice. And additionally, what you also have, if you have it, is a few other things. And these few other things are, now I need to first performance stats. So you have training status, which I currently do not have because I haven't trained that much with the watch. You also have a race predictor that actually determines or predicts what your race pace will be. I mean, something like this is just totally missing from Samsung Health. 
if I want to do if I want to do a 5k race for example on Samsung app of course maybe there is a coach but I I tried them and they are just bad and also there is just no good what you can do on Samsung Health, for example. I don't want to totally bash Samsung Health. You can, for example, say, okay, I want to do this workout for the next six weeks, and then there is a certain program, and it even downloads the program onto the watch itself. Also very nice. But what you can do on the other side with Garmin Connect, you can track your lifts in the gym, for example, and this is something you cannot do with this watch. So, but therefore, currently, I do have another app called Strong in order to track my gym lifts. And if I can do this all with one app, within one fitness app, that also now knows how much I lift in the gym and then also calculates my fitness age, which is an additional feature, which is just very nice. And what you also get is VO2 max. Within Samsung app, you also have VO2 max, but only if you run for, only on dedicated runs, it actually shows the stat, but it doesn't show the stat in, in a manner like this, where you actually can click on VO2 max. I don't know if this will appear after some time here or if it would also be similar. Then you can also have your lactate your lactate threshold, which it also determines, but it didn't de determine for me right now because I have only one workout stored. I also have the old workouts, but it didn't have the, the sensors of the watch recording the workout. Maybe that was something to go or to look for. What you also get is a power curve. Something like this, something just so basic it's like if you go for a, a run or a ride and then you have just a power curve functional threshold power critical swim speed hoe stress you also have in here and additionally you also now get your fitness your fitness age so basically reducing your biological age and therefore reducing mortality is one of the best things you can do and Biological age is a very relatable number. You are this old, and this is how old your body is, because you are that healthy. You are basically as healthy as a version of you that is younger, or as a version of the general average population that is younger. Because that's just the average of the population, usually, that is a reference. And my fitness age, even though I'm now 26, is 22.5. And in addition now, it just gives me a few things, a few very basic things. Like increase vigorous minutes because in the last weeks I first was sick and then I didn't work out a lot. So therefore it just shows me to increase my actual active minutes. And just by this, I can decrease my fitness age by a certain amount of years. And it actually tells me how many years. It tells me that I can reduce my fitness age by up to 5.4.5 years. This means I can reduce it to age 18. At this point in time, I don't know if this is always possible, but for example, it just recommends to me that I would reduce my BMI. Of course, I don't want to get rid of muscles and bones and organs, so therefore I obviously have to not lose weight, but lose fat. Of course, this also correlates, but I think it also just using weight, I want to lose weight is kind of not the right word because it's not precise, it's not accurate. It could also mean you lose muscle. Even though we talk about losing weight, what you also actually mean is losing fat. So if I reduce my BMI, it says on here, if I reduce my BMI to 20.7, then this can help lower my fitness age. I don't know how much because it doesn't give me an exact value, but just having something like this in here is very nice. Both systems have advantages. Galaxy has Galaxy system or the Samsung Health system has ECG currently. Samsung, not Samsung, but Garmin already is testing also ECG and probably also blood pressure on their watches already, but they haven't fully implemented this yet and it also is just not available at this point in time. Here it is available. This is a touch watch. This has an AMOLED screen. This also is a camera controller. This also is a complete phone. I can call people. This is an emergency phone. The only problem with it is if I need actually, if I am cycling for two hours and I also record it because it also is my fitness watch, it probably won't last until I eventually have my emergency call or just the, the risk of it not being available due to battery. And the only option to not have this problem is to carry a power bank with me and the charger with me at all times. And then it still needs to charge and so on and so forth. So what I'm thinking is, by having two watches 
And I have to mention that there is only one model of the Garmin watch that has LTE and therefore also works as a phone. And of course, because I have a Samsung phone and I have a Samsung watch, these two have super integrations all together also. Now, additional integrations. I will basically continue to use this watch, basically as my smartwatch. And even if I use this, so what I also have to mention is that this is also my backup payment device. I have currently one service set up, which is Samsung Pay, and I also could set up Google Pay with an additional payment provider. So therefore I would have two additional digital versions of payment. In addition to already having the normal banking app of my, of my bank on my phone, one option, then I also have Samsung Pay on my phone, two options, then I also have Google Pay on my phone, three options, and I also have different cards set up within Google Pay from different bank accounts, so I have basically more options to pay digitally with my phone. In addition now, I can pay two times digitally with my watch if one service doesn't work. I additionally have multiple banking cards, and additionally sometimes I also have cash with me as an additional layer of security, which of course with war and so on and so forth, and also with inflation, maybe is a little bit more important recently. Now, ideally, I also would have a watch that lasts for days, maybe for weeks, and I also would have maybe a solar ring that actually charges the watch. So therefore, I wouldn't actually need a power bank or something like this. The scenario of which I'm thinking is, what if I'm in the mountains for a week, for example, and I track my activities, and then I need to make an emergency call because I'm climbing with a friend and we are in the mountains and it's seven days after I had contact with a plug and electricity. Of course, I can charge it with an additional solar panel, for example. But maybe what I also can do is just leave my watch if it has one of these solar panels. The Phoenix 6 and the Phoenix 7 have these solar panels. Also, the Forerunner comes in a solar version. And then you can just charge it during the day. I don't know to which degree you can charge it, but it at least seems to extend the battery to basically almost infinity. And I think it also mentions it on the pages sometimes with infinite battery life basically at least in theory if you charge it enough and if it is exposed to bright light i didn't get though the solar version of the 6s pro ordered yesterday in order to replace this watch but what i got is the normal version why because of the color preference the other one only comes in in purple and i don't want a purple watch even though it looks maybe fairly similar to gray i want a black watch and the same is true for the Phoenix. It also comes in a, the Phoenix 7, it also comes in a gray version. This here is the Sapphire Solar Edition, which comes in a slightly grayer version, as you can see here. And there are also other versions available, which I obviously cannot click on with my mouse on my other phone, but there are other versions available. So what I'm saying is that I want the black one, ideally, but there are also these gray versions. But this is the Phoenix 7, and on the Phoenix 6S, which was the one that made more financial sense, sense because it only cost me 319 euros, whereas this cost 365 euros. And a refurbished model or a used model of the Phoenix 7S, so the smaller version of the 7, also with solar power would have cost 600. So now what I do also have is an upgrade path. I do have, for example, the Galaxy Watch 4 still, because it doesn't make sense to upgrade to the next one. But I will eventually upgrade to the next device. And the same is true then for the Garmin watch. I then have the best model just from 2019 and it has basically all the features I could want. It's just an older version and maybe it has, doesn't have the newest features. Whereas this one is only, for example, four gigabytes of storage. It does have the newer sensor, which the other one, other one doesn't have. So in total, to summarize, why do I now probably wear two watches? Because it offers symmetry, because it off offers that are both I have almost equal weights on both of my hands. I also can then wear two equal straps because this is a 20 millimeter strap that is very convenient because I can just take off my watch and put it back on. And on here, it's not as easy. Of course, sometimes, and if you are quick, but I also need usually something to fix than the second strap end because I just cannot pull it with one hand, just like here. And also whenever I then take a measurement, which is maybe a health snapshot, then I just take this 
tighten it and I move it back and that's it. And on here, it's a little bit more difficult, I would argue. And then you still need to find this thing here, move it back. And also these are just not as comfortable to wear. So with the other watch, I will then have two watches. In addition, the other one is a little bit bigger. So I also already kind of thought about this. This watch is not as small as this all the time, but actually I do have a cover which goes on to the watch. And I often don't use the cover because whenever I shower, there is then water in between those. But whenever I am outside and working maybe with tools, then it makes sense to use the cover to not scratch the watch. And therefore this is now bigger anyway. And for this reason, a slightly bigger watch I think makes sense apart from the other reasons, apart from the Mac map functionality and just in general having basically the best watch just from a few years ago, two and a half years ago actually, because it came out in mid-2019. To summarize, I want to have access to both of these very good systems. Both could be better, both could integrate better, but what I do have with Samsung Health is basically also I can use Google Health for anything. I also can use Google Health on this watch to track all of my workouts because it's a Wear OS watch. It also is basically a smartwatch, which allows me to use it as a Google Fit tracker. So I not only have Samsung Health, but I also have Google Health, which of course has privacy concerns and so on and so forth, but this is not the point where I discuss these. So I have already both of these systems and I can use them in order to integrate with other systems. Like, there is an app called Life Extent, which allows you again to calculate your age. And then if it has automatically the values, then it updates your biological age calculated from these different things. Again, something that's just very nice. The same is true for my fasting tracker. It automatically puts, pulls in data and therefore can make correlations between my fasting levels and the fasting times. And then also maybe use something like fasting ketones, which you can measure with something like a, a device where you can actually breathe in. So it measures some of the ketones basically that come, that come out. And this, sometimes it's accurate, but there's a company called Biosense, which sells a device for 300 euros, not in Europe yet. But what this can do then is it can track the ketones. And in, ideally it would, it would then store the ketones, would then store the ketones within Samsung Health, Google Health, and also within Garmin Fit. In addition, you can get your blood pressure device that is not only your Galaxy Watch, but a professional one that ideally also syncs with these services. So I can get rid of my phone. I can get rid of most of the use of my Galaxy Watch. Therefore, let's say I'm in the mountains and due to so due to Garmin not offering LTE of their watches on their watches, ideally I would have both watches activated on one single plan, on one single data plan and, and call plan. But this is currently not the case. So therefore I have one plan set up for my phone, one plan set up for eSIM on my Galaxy Watch. And I probably would need an additional one for this watch, which additionally would cost me probably five to 10 euros a month. I don't know if it would be worth it, but at least it would be nice to have still the feature to maybe switch plans and to maybe deactivate this watch entirely, I don't know. But what I'm thinking is, if I record activities on here, then this watch dra drains less in battery. Will I still record heart rate on here? I don't know as of yet. But what I could potentially do is if I am in the mountains for two weeks, then I could just turn this watch totally off all the time. I wouldn't necessarily need it unless I need my phone. And then whenever I actually need to call someone, I do have a phone on my wrist, which is on me basically at all times and which I then don't need to charge. If it is fully charged and turned off, then I don't really need to charge it. So for this reason, I will keep probably both watches. Not for infinity, but maybe for the next months, maybe only for the next weeks until I realize it was a dumb idea all along, but just having this the visual symmetry, also the symmetry while running, also the fact that the battery issue on the Galaxy Watch is then less significant because I have a watch that has not infinite battery, but a much better battery life, which I can record. And I also can record a lot more data. And the more data I have, I think, the more I am controlling myself from basically, an, if this is upper me watching lower me, and then whenever I eat a cookie and I do have all of the effects stored in a health system, if it is apparent, if it is visible. With Whoop, for example, what you can do is 
you can track different habits you have and it will then track the impact and i hope something similar will happen in in garmin that it will maybe also give me tips like okay this is what you ate currently it only synchronizes the calories the total calories but what if in the future it said like okay you ate this last night and you ate this at this point in time and then it says okay this impacted your training readiness by this much and if you went out for a run and you maybe did eat a little bit better the last night you could have made the same race but 10 minutes better if it's a marathon a marathon for example if you have a if you would have avoided eating at this point and eat it healthier ate healthier and did this and this and this and this better then maybe and this these are all correlations that come maybe will come true not correlations but fantasies about these systems that might come true in the future and also already are kind of true with something like Garmin Connect but much more with Garmin Connect compared to Samsung Health or Google Fit because these are more on the basic side and more for the standard user that just wants to track their steps. So currently there is no one system that does it all for you. There is a system called Heads Up which integrates multiple services but what you actually want is data. Data on off you. Data of your HRV, data of your heart rate and the correlations between all of these different systems. So I will be using multiple systems. I will be using probably one app or maybe Garmin Connect in the future to track my gym lifts. Maybe I won't in the future, but currently I have to use different apps because Garmin Connect doesn't have a fasting tra tracker, because Samsung Health doesn't have a fasting tracker, because they wanna appeal to a certain audience and therefore they implement the features which most people are most likely to use and get rid of all the other ones because also this makes it unnecessarily complicated for the average user probably. 